Hello, welcome back to Average Gamer Plays Factorio. This is a bit of a sideline video. It's not really going to be part of the main um, uh, the main set of videos where I'm actually building the base. Uh, this this video, I'm just going to be talking about logistics, train network, and how I use it. And it's not going to be a fully fledged tutorial video. It's just going to talk a little bit about LTN what it is what it does and how i use it and i don't use all of the features that it provides so if you want a fully comprehensive tutorial about it then you'll have to um, use your favorite search engine there are two or three videos out there that uh, are very very good and very comprehensive but let's dive straight in ltn gives you um basically a logistic train stop as a new item and it also gives you uh, let's just put down a, um, a combinator here see I use I use a couple of different mods for this one to help me uh, manage LTN but for the basic LTN situation you put down an LTN train stop you put a combinator near it uh, where's the combinator oh, there it is do that on the same side you then program the combinator by adding in various different signals and these are on this um, yeah the signals tab here and there are various different ones to say this is what you th th this is how you program the LTN stop to do what you want it to do so you can either say it's a depot by putting that item into the combinator or you say it's a requester station uh, by putting I think you just put the request threshold in and the provide threshold in to say that it's a provider station. And it will then, uh, yeah, so if we say this is going to be a provider station, we just put the provide threshold in there. I think you can set the amount it's been a while since I've used this actual version of, of you know sets of programming using the combinator um, what I actually use is another mod called LTN combinator which lets me program the combinator using a nice easy user interface so all these are the different items that I would put into the combinator itself if I was doing it manually so I will put in a request threshold. I will program it for 32,000. And this is saying the way this works is that we program it to, we tell it how many um, items are in a full set of chests. So on here, we have, let me just come out of the Spidertron for a minute. We have steel chests which have 48 slots. So each one of these, and then these items stack to 100. So each chest holds 4,800 items. I have four chests per train wagon, and there are eight wagons on a train. So for copper plate, we do 4,800 times four chests times eight wagons 153,600 which is the number programmed into here now that is a negative number so what this does is it takes the amount in the chests and adds it to this number so it basically subtracts one from the other and it gives you a difference and this here over on the right hand side it says minus 18,000 
which means there is space in these chests for 18,000 more copper plate. Right, so we can get a few, one, two, three, four, 520 in that chest and, you know, eight in that one and whatever, right? Over all these chests, and these are all wired together, so there's a red wire, chest to chest to chest to chest. And then the red wire goes to the power pole and through to this power pole, and this one, and then into this combinator, and then into the lamp on the train station. You've got to be careful to wire the combinator to the lamp and not to the station itself. I've made this mistake before. So this is telling me that all the combina all the um, this is telling me that all the storage chests can hold 153,000 items. We're requesting 32,000, which is what a train holds. So a train wagon has 40 slots. So we've got 40 times 100, which is what it stacks to, times 8, which is how many wagons there are in a train. 32,000. Now the minimum train length and maximum train length I don't need to set in mind because all my trains are the same length. If I were to set it up where I had different length trains doing different things, like I only needed um, trains with four wagons to actually transport the finished um, science packs to the research labs, then I'd have a separate network set up or a separate depot with the shorter trains and I would say this station will only request a train of this length and that station will only request a train of that length. At the moment all of my trains are 11 wagons long so that's three locomotives. If I just wander over to the depot which is just over this side all my trains are three locomotives and eight wagons which is 11. And I should be careful of this because this is a live system. These, there's one combinator here which is just set to be a depot and I'll talk about the network ID in a minute. That is connected through a red wire to every single lamp on every single one of these depots, these stations. So they are all set to be LTN Depot 38, and this is because I was going to have, you know, this is for three locos and eight wagons. I, I, if I was at different length trains, I would have a different depot for one, four trains or for whatever. The train sits in the depot without a schedule set to it. So when an item, when a station requests an item, LTN will find a train in a depot and allocate a schedule to it. So let's, um, let me just get my Spidertron over here. Now because I'm in a test copy of the world, what I can do is Oh, let's get in the Spidertron so I don't get run over by the trains. So what I'm going to do is set something up here where we are... Uh, let's get these um, infinity loaders and just put that onto here so that all these factories on this side will start making green circuits and sending them out down this wire, this uh, belt. Now because it's now using up items we can see on here the amount on the right minus 32,000. Now when it gets down below a level it will then request a train and it has requested a train because the little lamp has gone green. You can't really see it too well, but there is a, the lamp there has gone yellow. 
that has then put this schedule it's found a train in the depot it's put this schedule on it it uses temporary stops I don't quite know exactly why but it will then it sends it to an LTN provider station that has enough items in it for a train full of stuff it will then send that train to a temporary stop which is like just before this stop I think it goes to the temporary stop and then it deletes it from the schedule and then it just carries on through to this stop here Temporary stop disappears, the train empties as normal and then when the train is empty it will then go back to the depot and then this uh, schedule will be deleted and the train will just sit there waiting for a new, uh, new request. So blue means there is a train at the station, green means normal, yellow means there is a train requested so this station here for the copper plate says it's hovering between 30 and 31 minus 29 minus 28 so we're actually filling up the station faster than we're filling up the chests faster than we're draining them this stop here this station here is for copper plate and we're saying that we are minus 45,000 minus 44 So this iron is minus 34, minus 35. It should request a new train. This green light will go yellow soon. There it goes. It's found a train. The train leaves the depot. And it goes to a pickup station. Fills up, brings it over here, drops it off, goes back to the depot. It's all very, very easy well it's easy once you know how when I was setting it up and when I was programming it all I actually had a little notepad document that says this is what I need to put in here and this is how I need to set everything up and I still don't know whether the limit trains here works or whether it's the limit trains here that actually stops the uh, stations getting overloaded I still haven't figured that bit out you can apparently have the stops with the same names I like to have all the stops having different names so that I know uh, that things are going to be uh, you know this train is actually just going to go to this stop so this is why I've got sort of copper for greens one um, this one over here is when I can find the highlight for it copper for greens two copper for greens three copper for greens four and then similarly you know iron one two three and four so this will keep on requesting trains and then once I if I take these off and then these stage these um, factories start backing up because these items are no longer effectively going out anywhere else this will back this will back up it will stop drawing off the um, off the chests that will then stay at it says minus 57,000 so it's requesting another train to fill this up when that figure gets to be less than minus 32,000 or greater than minus 32,000 however you want to look at it it will stop requesting trains because there isn't enough room in the chests for a train's worth of stuff so you can see as it's filling it up it goes minus 47, 46 and so on This will empty out the train. This one got 11,000 on it. You 
that one is now minus 31,000 so there's just not quite enough space in those chests for another train so that will stay green there's no train on allocated to that stop at the moment as soon as we start using some iron up it will request another train so that is empty that has now finished emptying minus 27,000 which is again not enough for a train there's still a few bits and pieces here that are working pretty much it's going to stop in a minute All the, oh there's a, still a line there that I've got to take out okay it will now stop working now the network ID I've got a large base and it's got depots all over the place and I've got these other trains here doing um, iron and then smelting the iron into steel and I've got a train here a depot here which just serves I've separated this set part of the base into a separate network and the reason for that is that when something the you know uh, uh, one of these stations requests some iron ore I want it to use one of these trains and one of these mines I don't want it to request iron ore from all the way over here there's an iron mine over there and if it's all part of the same network there's nothing stopping it nothing stopping LTN allocating a train sending it over there filling it up with iron ore sending it all the way back over here and getting it to drop off the iron ore there I mean it will work it will just take a long time because the the, the the mine is a long way away from there so I've separated this bit out into a separate network ID so I've got these stations over here uh, on network ID 2 and all the other stations over here are on network ID 1 or network ID minus 1 which just means anything now the network IDs are a binary system and that can be a little bit difficult to get your head round initially so if I put down let's say we have eight these eight chests represent The eight bits in a binary number now I'm not going to go into a tutorial about how binary works um, but suffice to say if network ID 1 is set like that network ID 2 is that because that is 2 in binary network ID 3 will mean it'll use a train from either ID network 1 or network 2 so if you want to have a third network on the system you have to call it network 4 which is the next binary number across which is uniquely just got a unique digit on it so that's 1 2 4 and then the next one is network ID 8 if you have a train set from network ID nine it will call from network ID eight and network ID one so I'm not going to go into any more detail about that if you need to know more about that you have to learn a bit more about how binary works and how the network IDs uh, you combine the different binary digits to make network IDs um, you know either unique or not unique according to your needs um, so the way I've set it up at the moment I've got all these stations over on this main part of the base being either network ID 1 or network ID minus 1 which means anything so if it's set to minus 1 and it requests uh, it could still sort of request a train from over here so if something over here is set to network ID minus 1 and it's requesting plastic for this utility science over here if there isn't any other trains over here available for plastic it will choose one from over here because that's what's available 
So I do like to split everything out into specific networks. Now the refueling train, let's wander back over to the refueling train. This is not a logistic train network train. This is a normal vanilla train stop. It's called nuclear refuel. They're all called nuclear refuel. And it's just connected with a wire to the chest. And this station is set, set to be enabled when there's less than 20 uh, nuclear fuel in the chest. And at the moment, there is more than 20. If I were to just take another chest, uh, empty that out, just stick them into that chest for now. This station has now become active and it's sending the train because there's only 15 items in this chest. It says there there's 15 on the signal. So as soon as there is less than 20 items in that chest, it will activate this station and send a train to it. Now the train, when it gets here, I'll just put it into manual mode for now. Right. The train is just set to be nuclear pickup at the main base and then nuclear refuel. Now there are five stops called nuclear refuel and they're all at the moment disabled. As soon as one is enabled the train will go to it. If two are enabled it will go to the closest one but as soon as it fills up it will then disable itself and it'll then you know go back to the main base fill up with fuel and come to the uh, the other station which is still enabled. So if a train doesn't have any enabled stations, it will just wait. This, you know, this, this train now sits there at the main base and it just waits for one of these stations to, to turn on. So that's how that works. So I've got all these stations called nuclear refuel and I've got one at each depot. And this one I think is doing rocket fuel instead of nuclear fuel. It's just called rocket fuel drop off. And there's no real reason why I did that instead of doing nuclear fuel. I think it was just because these trains didn't have to go as fast as the nuclear ones because they didn't. I knew they would just have shorter journeys. So I just had this one filling up with nuclear fuel, with rocket fuel from the main base. And then as soon as that station is empty, Yes, it will send the rocket fuel train all the way from that side of the base over there, all the way across to here, and it will drop everything off. Um, and this, the, um, well, I can't click on the link there. This one, because this one does more trains or whatever, I've got more drop, because the rocket fuel doesn't last as long as the nuclear fuel, I've got four, um, unload stations here so it's probably got a higher limit so it'll send a train there very infrequently but it drops off a lot of fuel when it does and then there's a few logistics bots in here and then these are requester chests so as soon as we need some fuel as soon as one of these chests if I take the let's, uh, let's slow this down to game speed one as soon as I take the fuel out of this one um, it will request, uh, let's just do this, move that out of the way. If I take that out of there, you'll see a, a bot flying out, pick up the fuel from here and drop it back in over there. And there it goes. So that then gets filled back up again with some fuel. And that's it basically. The only caveat, the only thing that you need to bear in mind is that the the wires have to go from um, to the lights on the station and not to the main station itself. I made this mistake in, in one of the other depots and nothing worked for ages until I realised I've not actually wired everything up properly. And then there is a little um, work on uh, Factorio in that when you 
um, copy and paste something with a wire on it you get the wire copied and pasted for free you don't have to uh, use lots and lots of wires you can just have one wire in your blueprint or when you're putting it down and then copy and paste this over and over and over again and you get lots and lots of free wires and that's very very useful when putting down these LTN um, stations and depots with the uh, wiring together or the storage chests um, because you can just put it into your blueprint once and, 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 and stamp it down if I just turn alt mode off you can see the wires a little bit clearer there linking all these stations together and then it says on the signal there that there are 460,000 green circuits in those chests. Now the other mod that I use for this is LTN Manager which just puts another little button down here and I'm not really got that used to this mod but it tells you, it gives you an overview of all your depots um, how many have station, how many have trains at them, how many don't have trains where the train for that depot actually is and again what all the stations are what they are providing what they're requesting um, that's just filtering everything just called oil so let's just call this uh, you know absolutely everything and it's listing all the all the stops all the stations um, history of what's been happening, alerts for things that haven't happened properly um, and what you've got stored where so that's a, a useful little mod and the other thing that I've not talked about yet is these um, recycling stations which is another mod LTN cleanup and what this one does let's wander over there pretty quick This one, because LTN is set to leave a station after two minutes, it might still leave the station with some items still on the train. And you can turn that off in the settings. You can go into um, mod settings. I don't know if it's on the map or per player. Yeah, LTN settings down here. Um, the stop timeout if you turn that to zero a train will wait at the station until it's empty um, various other parameters you can set here if it requests a train and it can't find one it will the request will time out after uh, 18,000 ticks which is I can't work out how many uh, seconds that is but uh, there's a few different parameters now the one I'm going to talk about here is this request threshold and provide threshold because this is relevant for this uh, these recycling stations so the recycling is another mod which sets up and again you can use normal stations for this it just sets up a new train name train station name if I rename this station I go in to these signals here I've got a cleanup stop and I can either set it to clean up any item or I can just add the items on to the list so this is going to be a cleanup stop for copper ore, copper plate, iron ore, iron plate, green, red, blue circuits, plastic and steel so any trains that leave a station a drop-off station with those items still in there will come to this cleanup station first before going back to the depot and then I've got lots and lots of bots in this network I've got 924 here these are provider chests so as soon as the, um, the wagons are emptied into these provider chests the bots will then immediately pick items up out of here and put them into the relevant requester chest so this is requesting 2,000 copper ore, this one is requesting 4,000 copper plate, and so on. So each of these stations, and then this one has been renamed, this is recycled copper, recycled copper plate, 
recycled iron ore and so on each one of these has been renamed I've got these as being um, That should be a provider. That is not set up correctly. That, maybe I was clicking on the wrong one. Right, so this is now set up as being a provider. And it provides 4,000 items. So as soon as there's more than 4,000 items in these... Um, requester chests and at the moment it tells me that there's 3,900 copper ore in there so as soon as that gets to be 4,000 or more it will send a train to it and because I've now set this as a provide priority of 1,000 so this is a higher priority than a normal train normal uh, copper station so as soon as this has enough items, it will come and empty from here first before going to a normal copper station. So this makes sure that the items in here do get recycled and sent round to the stations, to the other stations, when, uh, as and when they need them. So I've set these as being a lower provide threshold and a higher priority. And that, I find, also works quite well. So as long as I've got a, a recycling station for every item that I'm using, um, and I found that occasionally, when I first turned on the low density structure factory to test it, they, there were items, there were uh, trains coming back to the depot here with, with low density structures on them because there wasn't anywhere to empty them out. Um, it had left the drop-off station with items still on the train and end up going back to the depot and then if a train gets reallocated to another item and it's still got items in the wagons then this is what's causing uh, you can get contamination on the lines and this is what caused me to put in the um, stack filter inserters over here let's just uh, speed up a little bit that's what caused me to um, set up these stack filter inserters here to make sure that if a train arrived over here it would only empty these filtered items so even if it arrived with both types of plate in the wagon it would only empty the iron plate into the chests and that seems to work quite well but yeah it's an automated system once you've set it up and once you've got it working properly and you've got your blueprint correctly set up and you know what items to put in and you can turn these chests off or whatever they're just normal combinators the combinator can have an output turned off um, if you turn that off that just won't request any items even when these chests are empty so when you're building the stations turn them all off and then uh, have them turned off in your blueprint and then when you want to turn them on to, to test them you can do um, that's it I don't know how much more I can say about that it is just a case of can I find a depot all these stations are up down stations have I got any that go left and right I do have a couple here with the plastic don't I if I wander over here you might be able to see how the um, The chests are sort of wired together. Uh, game speed one. Go there, hop out. So yeah, you can see that I've got a wire going from chest to chest to chest, over to the end, onto the power cable. So I can see on there 147,000 plastic bars. Um, so yeah, not all of these are full. You need to make sure that you include all the chests in uh, on the same wire and that they all go in so that this can then read however many items is in the in in there now you don't need to specify on the output for a provider station because it will just provide whatever's on the signal so this because it reads that signal and it knows it's plastic bars that's what it provides 
but you do need to tell it that your train will hold 32,000 items so it will it knows not to request a train to this station until these chests have at least a train's a, a train full's worth of stuff in there so if this only has 15,000 items in it it won't send a train to this station and this is why you could you um, occasionally see a message flash up at the corner of the screen saying no station provided no uh, no station found providing plastic bar or something it's because they're all empty and we're still waiting for one to get filled up to have enough items in it so this is what i'm hoping that this setup that i've got here now will provide as soon as the ltn system requests a train for 32,000 plastic bars on it that there is a station here with 32,000 plastic bars in it ready to provide and, and fulfill that request fingers crossed and you can change these requests uh, it doesn't have to be a whole train full you can say well I'll only want to you know I'll send a train when it's half full or when I've only got enough to fill half of it I'll still send a train to that station that's fine you can play around with the request thresholds and the provide thresholds to to get things um, you know working uh, the way that you want them to work but um, this so far seems to be working for me quite well for now uh, the fluids sort of works the same sort of way you 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 tell it how many um, You tell it how many items you want to request and here I've actually had to set this to be uh, I think I did another test of being see the train holds 400,000 and I'm always requesting 450,000 so this is what causes this one to actually send more than one train at a time and keep this because it uses up the oil really quickly um, it always has you know the two stops two trains with this stop for now three trains and the train stays the train stays on the schedule until it goes back to the depot so if we just follow one of these trains this one in yellow this is heading to the drop-off it empties you'll see it coming out on the bottom corner of the screen in a minute there it goes that still has this same schedule on it until it goes back to the depot at which point the schedule is removed and the train will disappear off this screen just had a slight interruption for a phone call but um, yeah so the fluids kind of works the same way as everything else. You just have to sort of um, request, you know, link, um, join all the, the storage tanks together with the wires, set your request and your provide threshold and whatever. And um, I mean, this factory keeps working because I think I was this was the test I was doing just to use up all the plastic bars. So you can see, I hover over here, minus 16,000. and goes down to 17 as it's using up the coal so as soon as that gets to and again the threshold for here for coal is only 16,000 because coal only stacks to 50 so as soon as that gets to be um, you know again have a train's worth of stuff in the chests enough space there to unload a train it will request a train and as long as the train there I might only have one now yeah as soon as this gets down I think to um, so that is now sort of minus 76 that is no that is down at minus 27 minus 28 and then this train is coming in to fill it up I think if that gets down to more than minus 32 it, it will request two trains at a time 
and then as soon as one leaves the next one will come in because there's a stacker at the top so this is a fairly constant sort of drops below the threshold it requests a train it goes up over the threshold so it doesn't and then as soon as it drops under the threshold again it requests another train and it's the same with the oil there's sort of always one or two trains on the go with the oil so that's how the LTN system works and that's how I use it there are other features that it has you can request instead of items you can request stack sizes I think you can set it up in a particular way if you've got more than one different item on a train most people set things up so that each train only contains one or each station only provides one item um, but yeah I like the idea of having these depots in the middle where all the trains are refueled so it doesn't matter where the pickup stations are or the drop-off stations the train always gets refueled when it goes back to the depot um, I've got normal vanilla trains taking items from these uh, ore patches to the smelters so these just uh, are normal little trains on the same as on the other sort of small base it starts here waits till full goes to there waits till empty goes back here waits till full um, and again there's a little uh, uh, coal refueling train and that picks up coal over here and it waits for one of these coal stations to request some items and again there's uh, I think there were six of those dotted about they're all along here one two three four five six um, so again the, st the, the trains will go forwards and backwards to the um, the ore patches but they'll get refueled when they drop the ore off at the um, at the smelter so we've got normal trains just going forwards and backwards here and then LTN trains at the other end sort of picking stuff up from the smelter and taking it to wherever because there's half, there's several different stations around that are requesting copper plate so there's four stations here at the green circuits requesting copper plate there's more stations here at the uh, the red and yellow science um, factory requesting copper plate. There's stations uh, obviously over here for the low density structures requesting copper plate. And as soon as a station makes a request, the LTN system will allocate uh, a train to it. It'll find a supply station which has 32,000 items in the chests and it will send a train to it and um, send it to its destination and then back to the depot all good stuff and that is how I use the logistics train network and I really like it so yes there's uh, I did a comment about this on one of my other videos but I thought I'd do a video explaining it the comment forgot to mention the um, recycling stations so basically yes there's four mods that I'm using there's LTN, LTN Combinator, LTN Manager and LTN Cleanup and they all fit together and the other thing that I just did recently which I did explain in a recent video is that I'd set these train limits on these stations on these depots all these they have a train limit of one and this is so that uh, a, sta a train won't sort of sit and queue up and wait back here if that station is then full it won't send another sta uh, another train back to that particular station so you should always have more depots around than trains so it always has somewhere to go and park and uh, that's that so hopefully that'll fit that'll, that's uh, you, you found that useful you it's explained how things all work and how things fit together uh, if there's anything I've missed out let me know and uh, I will leave it there for now and I will say see you next time